Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm truly honored to have this opportunity to speak to you today at the annual conference of the US Japan Council, especially since it is being held in Tokyo for the first time. Prime Minister Abe and Secretary Fox spoke from the viewpoint of the government, so I will focus on the US-Japan partnership from perspective of business world. Let me first begin by sharing what I believe is an overarching truth, the economic interdependence between our two countries has been and will always be one of the most crucial foundations of the relationship. Further, regardless of how much or how fast emerging economies grow, I believe that the U.S. will continue to maintain its unquestioned presence as the world's most influential economic power. A vast energy supply, supported by enormous shale oil and, oil and gas resources, and favorable demographics provide a clear advantage. But the essential strength and key driver of growth for the U.S. economy is, without a doubt, innovation. This is at the core of American character and the single most defining feature of the nation. It is supported and driven by society that prizes diversity, openness, and entrepreneurship. The secure stagnation theory proposed by Professor Larry Summers attributes the current slowdown in the global economy to a lack of innovation. I agree to some extent, but I also believe that the recent developments in information and communication technology, including big data, artificial intelligence, robotics, and Internet of Things can be an evolutional growth driver for the global economy in the 21st century. These new technologies are also the results of that same spirit of innovation that originated and thrives in the States. In addition, it should go without saying that the stable political system and a position of global leadership, including soft power, as defined by Professor Joseph Nye, also contribute significantly to the strength of U.S. industries and economy. In Japan, our economy has finally began to recover after stagnation that has lasted over two decades. The widely held opinion is that the recovery has been driven by Abenomics, even though those initiatives are still underway. Regardless of the long-term effects of Abenomics, it has already succeeded in bringing about a clear change in attitude, in particular, of business leaders from a defensive mind to a more constructive posture that envisions a more progressive future. I believe that Japan can return to sustainable growth if the public and private joint efforts, including new Three Arrows initiatives under Prime Minister Abe's leadership, continues to generate positive momentum. In the meantime, the recent economic slowdown in China has led to the argument that the center of the gravity for the global economy will now shift from Asia back to the States. However, the Asian economy still has the potential for the high growth despite short-term setbacks. Added to this is the fact that economies of the U.S., Japan, and the most of Asia are closely interconnected. For example, the trade volume involving the Pacific Rim region accounts for nearly two-thirds of world trade, and this percentage is expected to further increase. 
To that end, I believe that the trans Trans-Pacific Partnership involving 12 nations and finally agreed last month will be a powerful catalyst to expedite the creation of this mega economic zone. I have no doubt that the U.S. will remain the largest market and the best partner for Japanese economy and the industry. It is even more important for us to share the lead in creating a prosperous pan-Pacific economy and include our neighbor countries in Asia. Keeping all of this in mind, let me now shift my focus to MUFG's global and U.S. business strategies. While still maintaining a solid footprint in our home market in Japan here, we have actively expanded our business outside of Japan, leveraging our extensive network of 140,000 employees in over 2,000 offices in nearly 50 countries. We have promoted our corporate banking business across the globe. We are now the second largest lender in the advanced economies. At the same time, we are making the U.S. and ASEAN countries our priority markets by building comprehensive local banking platforms, which include both retail and commercial banking business. For example, two years ago, we acquired the Bank of Ayutthaya, Thailand, the fifth largest bank in the country. This was our first major acquisition of a local bank in Asia and it supports our strategy of increasing our local presence in the region. In the meantime, our history in the States dates back to 1880, when one of our predecessor banks opened an office in New York. This was the first overseas office of a Japanese bank designed to facilitate the finance needs of Japanese companies as they began to develop their foreign trade business at that time. Over the next 135 years, we expanded our network in key U.S. cities. On the West Coast, San Francisco-based Union Bank is our strong regional franchise. Our headquarters for the Americas which includes our wholesale banking business, is located in New York. Last year, we integrated our U.S. operations to create the 13th largest bank in the nation, combining a strong retail and commercial banking with a thriving wholesale business. Our ultimate goal is to be among top 10 banks in the States. We cannot adequately discuss our U.S. business without talking about our strategic partnership with Morgan Stanley. In October 2008, immediately following the collapse of Lehman Brothers, MUFG invested nine billion U.S. dollars in Morgan Stanley. Not only did this enhance our investment banking capabilities, but it allowed us to further strengthen our commitment to the U.S. Our relationship with Morgan Stanley is now generally regarded as one of the most successful partnerships in the industry. Let me give you an example. Together, we acted as a global coordinator of the latest Japan Post Group IPO. The MUFG and Morgan Stanley team not only responded to the interest of the investors in both Japan and the States, but it also contributed to creating a point of nation. However, when we look back to 2008, making the decision pro to proceed with this transaction during such an extremely difficult environment has been described as catching a falling knife without a long-standing history of mutual trust between our two institutions, this alliance would not have been possible. In addition, 
the understanding and support of U.S. and Japanese regulators was also a pivotal element of the deal. Speaking as one who was directly involved in the difficult negotiations, I can share with you that I also came to realize the importance of solid government-to-government -government relationship between the U.S. and Japan. Next, I'd like to make some comments on the rise of fintech in the global markets. Fintech combines finance and technology and has attracted growing attention as a driver of successful entrepreneurship and innovation. I believe that it will dramatically change the landscape of our industry and its future. In response to the emergence of fintech, MUFG has established a global innovation team in Silicon Valley to create innovative business models and explore investment opportunities. For MUFG, the U.S. is a critically important market, not only because of its market size or potential growth, but also because of its history of creativity and innovation. MUFG's commitment to the U.S. is not limited to business. We have been and will always be committed to giving back to local communities in the U.S. They have been the source of our success and growth, and we have responded by supporting community-based activities. For example, when we plan to establish a subsidiary in California in the early 1950s, there was a requirement to fund the majority of the shares locally. The Japanese-American community responded to this challenge by purchasing over 50% of the shares, enabling us to create the local bank, which now merged into Union Bank. One of the most recent examples of MUFG's commitment to society is its participation in the Tomodachi initiatives created and led by the U.S.-Japan Council and the U.S. Embassy in Japan. Since 2012, MUFG has supported this program under the strong leadership of Uraine Hirano Inoue, former U.S. Ambassador John Roos, and Ambassador Caroline Kennedy. Over the past four years, under the Tomodachi MUFG International Exchange Program, about 100 Japanese and U.S. middle and high school students have exchanged visits. The program includes language study, tours of local companies, cultural and historic events, and home stays. I understand that. One of those students is the son of Mr. Toba, uh, the mayor of Rikuzen Takada, which was the heart of the earthquake disaster area, who will speak later today. Meeting and taking, talking with these young people who will someday lead the U.S. and Japan has made me increasingly aware of the importance of programs that allow for sharing and appreciation of each other's culture and ideas. Giving back to the community is our most important corporate social responsibility priority, and MUFG will continue to provide support based on local needs. As I have underscored, the U.S. is the most important business partner for many Japanese companies, including MUFG. In return, it is our hope to fulfill that role for the United States. However, I ask if we can continue to remain each other's most important partners. I firmly believe it's possible, not only because the U.S. and Japanese economies are closely interwoven in every aspect, but because these two countries with different histories and cultures share 
the same fundamental principles of democracy and the value of a market economy. We, along with other companies in both the States and Japan, are committed to further solidifying the relationship between our two countries to contribute to the development of a stronger world economy and a better society. Thank you.